Hello community! Today we talk about memory optimization for vision transformers. So this is what we want to achieve. We want to have a vision transformer that has a GPU memory imprint that is 15 times less than without this technology. And if you imagine that next time we go to a reversible video vision transformers, you know where we're heading for. So this is a purely technical presentation that you get to know how to rewrite your transformer system. So, we unfortunately, I cannot show you this because there is something that we have to learn first. And if you want to know why we have a problem, I mean, why I have a problem is here in this video, I showed you how if we have Bloom, the full 176 billion parameter model, and we train it on AWS, we need to go to machine learning P4 models, and we have to apply deep speed and quite some other features to be able to just run the inference task. So here we are. We are in the year 2020, University of Berkeley and Google. And they came up with something that is called an efficient transformer. And they had an idea that those large transformer models, and imagine we are talking here about the BERT model and about the very early vision transformer models in 2020, they are prohibitively costly. If Google tells you it's prohibitively costly, you can imagine how much it costs. So they proposed two techniques. We're going to have a look at both techniques. The first, they replaced the dot product self-attention. Remember, dot product self-attention. And the second, they were using something on the residual layer architecture of your transformer to make it reversible for a better backpropagation. Now, no, you're going to enjoy this. So here we go. We have three problems and I already give you the solutions just to show you that you always know where we are operating in the next pages. So three problems. First, the memory in a model with n number of layers, 10 layers, 24 layers, whatever number of layers you have, is n times larger, of course, than a single layer model due to the fact that all the activations need to be stored for backpropagation. Remember backpropagation, your network? Yes, there was something. Second, and this is the least important point, but it is important, of course, since now the depth of the feedforward uh, network in intermediate feedforward layers is often much larger than the depth of the attention activation that accounts for a large fraction of, mem of memory use. And yes, you're not going to believe it, but we can simply split there. Okay, but now comes the interesting part. Our beautiful attention of our transformer architecture, the self-attention now is too computationally exhaustive and uses too much GPU or TPU memory. So we have to find a better solution that uses less memory. So we have to rewrite the self-attention mechanism in detail. And yes, I know you say, yippee, finally, the self-attention, I can rewrite it. I always wanted to optimize this simple, trivial part in the transformer architecture. Now, yes, today we are there. So, yes, solution. Let's have a look now at here the complexity and the dimensionality of our architecture. Now. Just as a short reminder, we have the dot product attention. We have the multi-head attention. This is the very simple formula that you know, that you love. In case you want to have a refresh, this is my video here on multi-head self-attention for transformer. This is the easiest explanation without any mathematics. Gives you an idea and then please come back. So what we want to do, we want to substitute our self-attention, our attention mechanism in the transformer architecture with some locality-sensitive hashing attention. And you might ask, why? Why the hell do I want to do this? Well, there are some beautiful benefits. And I show you it is in the complexity, in the dimensionality of the system, we get a reduction. But here, from the original paper, always I give you the original research paper, the archive preprint server. 
What the hell is locality sensitive hashing if you're not familiar with it? Now it's easy. They give you two examples. You have here a beautiful circle and you have here a vector to the coordinate x and the coordinate y here in a two dimensional plane and you have here an intersection with a beautiful circle and yes. Now please notice that here the, the arc difference here from x to y, the intersection point, is a little bit wider than here. Here those two intersection points are really close to each other. And yes, you guessed it, this is the solution. It is as simple as this. So if you now take this plane and you say, my goodness, is this a complicated drawing? And you separate it in different hash areas, in a white one, a pink one, whatever this is, and a yellow one, and an orange, red, I don't know, I'm colorblind, hash area, you see if you apply now, uh, for, uh, yeah, let's do a rotation here. So you move, to your little two points here, you move it along here, this circle, and you see now suddenly here, the first, the X is now still in the zero hash area. So we write here X, the first is zero, but the other one has moved across here, this imaginary borderline in the other hash basket. And this is now here in the area three. So we have one, two, zero, one, two, and three. This is our notation for the hashing areas, a hashing basket or hashing, whatever you want to call it. So you see, you have some random rotation. Now we go the other side, we go here. So luckily here, we are both now in the same hashing basket. So both here, we have two, two. But then if you just do a slightly elongation, again, we are separated. Now the idea is the closer you are together here on this, uh, within this uh, arc seconds or whatever, how you measure it, the higher is the probability that you are within the same hash sectors. Isn't this fascinating? You would never have guessed that it is so easy. So to formulate this, for the LSH extension, we start with two tensors. You notice our query uh, tensor of the shape batches, length, and D model. We keep the multi-head attention mechanism intact and focus on tension computation. The main issue, of course, is the term QKT which has the shape batch size, length, length, ah, multiplications or length, length. So we go with length square, but we are only interested in the softmax and you know why there's the softmax. No, you know it here. Attention is softmax of, my goodness, we are clever today. So we're interested in the softmax and since the softmax is dominated by the largest element, for each query QI, we only need to focus on the keys in K that are closest to QI. So now, how do you find these elements? Easy. The problem of finding nearest neighbors quickly in a high dimensional spaces can be solved by locality sensitive hashing. Now, what a coincidence. Yes, 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 you can read this, but it is clear. So very easy. To calculate the memory use of an attention mechanism, let us assume that U, K, and V all have the same shape, batch size, length, and the dimensional of the model. The main issue is, yes, as I showed you, important, yes, the matrix does not need to be fully materialized in memory. The attention mechanism can be indeed computed for each query QI separately, for each query QI separately, only calculating this expression once in a memory, and then recomputing it on the backward pass when needed for the gradients. And this is the beauty, this is the elegance. So this way of computing attention may be less efficient, but it only uses memory proportional to length. Because as you can see here, we have here a uh, length times the log of length, and this is not L square. Congratulations, we found a solution. Sometimes if you go for an interview, they ask you, hey, could you tell us if you have, for example, a scale dot product, show us the memory complexity or write down the time complexity if you compare this to the hashed attention complexity. So if you have an interview, please remember this is a question. Some people I do like also ask, so please huh, keep this in mind. Now, next part, reversible transformer. Or oh, just uh, before you saw it as a uh, reformer. So reversible transformer reformer, whatever. 
Now, where this this is that happens suddenly, but there is a history to this. So the reversible residual networks were introduced by hint. This is a hint, Gomez, where it was shown that they can replace the normal ResNets for image classification. So we use this from the ResNet and we apply it to the transformer network. The main idea is we have to prove this mathematically, but yeah, hint, hint is to allow the deactivations at any given layer to be recovered from the activations at the following layer using only the model parameters. So rather than having to checkpoint intermediate values for use in the backward pass, layers can be reversed one by one as prop back propagation proceeds from the output to its input. Now, isn't this beautiful? And now you might think that I showed you the whole truth and you might think that this is the solution no, this is exactly the point where everybody tries to squeeze by. This is some essential information you have to get right. Listen, there's the term residual layers and reversible residual layers. And I just checked on the internet and I had a look at four, five, six uh, links that, that Google provided me. And four of the explanations were simply wrong. And I can tell you, why and I can see that those that get it right where they copied it from. So the secret is you have to go to the original publication where it was published. You have to read the original papers. If you read some interpretation of an explanation of the original research paper, you can be sure that some part is missing. So I want to show you here a question, a question from a from a from a real professional who asked in 2020. I don't get it. We sum out the output of the self-attention with the original input as a residual connection. And even further, we sum that value with the output of the feedforward network. But why is that? Why do we always sum the input to the, sum the, input to the output of some component, like here for self-attention and feedforward network in this case, rather than just taking the output? Is this a form of regularization? And I love this because it shows you that even real experts in this field, they have questions. It is so beautiful to have questions. And a lot of people do not dare to ask a question. And this would be a mistake here because this is something that really, really troubles people. So very short answer. The key characteristics of residual connection or skips connection or whatever is that it provides short paths from earlier layers to later layers. So I show you two solutions, but you have to do this solution. This is the paper. Yes, we go back to 2015. But here, this is the paper I recommend. Please have a look at this. Deep residual learning for image recognition. This is by, yes, from Microsoft Research. But they show you here this idea of residual learning. This is the HTTPS link. Please have a look. And then if you go to our publication I showed you at the very beginning, then you would understand why in the formula 7, 8, and 9, now we are able to apply this from ResNet, from RefNet, now to here, our reversible transformer to our reformer. So you have an evolution from 2015 to Gomez, hint, Gomez, 2017, to 2020, to 2022, and now to reversed, then what we have a look, video uh, vision transformers in 2023. So there is no shortcut. You have to go step by step. You have to read. I would recommend you to read the literature. Otherwise, if you just rely what other people summarize for you, I would I personally would not understand this mechanism. So beautiful reversible transformer. You can read this yourself, no problem. So what have we achieved? Now, one of the beauty is that suddenly we do not need to store as many activations as before for each layer. And it shows that the memory savings in the reversible transformer do not come with any expenses of accuracy. So if you had before 10 out of 10, now you have, as an idea, 9 out of 10 for your accuracy. But you have significant memory savings. And of course, we 
approximated our full self-attention mechanism now with a hashed attention mechanism. Uh, as evidence, yes, becomes more accurate as the number of hashes increase. Again, a typical simulation, the more ends you have, the better your simulation, the better your Fourier will uh, converge. So the reformer or the reversible transformer combines the model capacity of a transformer with the architecture that can be executed efficiently on long sequences, since now it's not L square, and with a small memory use. This is the beauty I would like to take you, that you understand here, that from our three problems, we found three solutions. And this is the reason why this is the theory behind all of this. And now people started to code this. And if you see now somewhere the code for a, a reversible transformer or some reformer or whatever it is called, or in general, reversible layers, now you know why we do this. We have to reduce the complexity of the system for computational reasons. So, beautiful. Hint, Gomez. So, and now, okay, I give you now the link to Gomez if you really want to understand this. This is the paper 2017. You should have a look at. And this is also a question. If you have, go for an interview, please prepare this question. Reversible residual networks. And it can happen to you in the ResNet case. It can happen to you in the normal transformer case, and it can happen to you in the vision transformer case. It is always the same idea. And here, this is the original literature. Please always go for the original documentation for the research paper here. I'll give you the link. This is the paper. Those are the orchards. Have a look at this. And this is where they explain here in paragraph 3.2 backpropagation, how does it work without storing the activation for each layer? So, a little bit of a run-through. I know it is a little bit much for today. There's a lot of reading to be done. But if you crack here through this complexity of this system, you will understand now the new technology in vision transformers and you will have it much easier to understand why we will apply some code sequences in the reversed video vision transformer area when we will produce our first synthetic uh, short videos. Okay, I say thank you for today. And you know what's coming up in the next video? Reversible vision transformers.